The seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 38, fitting stainless steel grub screws to the safety valves and steam turret, followed by painting the boiler cladding. This was a job I wasn't particularly looking forward to, and I kept putting it off, but now it's time to get the job done. It isn't a difficult job by any means. What I'm about to do is fit a couple of grub screws to the safety valves to stop the middle bits from working loose and coming out. The first thing I need to do is remove them, and the general way to remove things like this is to use a pair of circlet pliers. Although circlet pliers were not designed for this, they are perfect for the job. This is the adjustable ring that puts pressure on the spring, which in turn presses the ball firmly onto the seat inside the valve. On the design of Jubilee fitting safety valves, which are the ones I would normally use, they aren't quite like this. This threaded centre part of a Jubilee fitting safety valve is much deeper and has an external locking ring at the top on the outside. Here you can see the design. There is a central spring on a shaft which has a recessed end part to hold the ball onto the seat. This image explains it all. A stainless steel ball, then a cup that holds the ball on the seat, with the help of the stainless steel spring of course, and then the top part which is adjustable to apply pressure to the spring, which allows you to set the safety valve to blow off at the correct working pressure. And on this boiler that is £100 per square inch. Here are the pair of safety valves with their mechanisms sat on the bench. The next thing I need to know is what the tapping size drill is for M4. I don't use metric fittings very often, so I haven't committed this tapping size drill to my memory. So I need some help from modern technology. I just say, hey Siri, what is the tapping size drill for an M4 bolt? And lots of information comes up on the screen of the phone and some of it tells me what the tapping size drill is for an M4 bolt. Or in my case, M4 grub screws. Here they are, they're made from stainless steel. I'd already marked the position where I needed to drill the hole on each of the safety valves. I'm using a 3.2mm drill because brass is softer than other metals and I was a bit worried that a 3.3mm drill might have been a bit big. 3.3 is what the chart that I looked at on the phone recommended. Here I'm threading the hole using a 4mm tap, and after drilling and tapping the first one, I've brushed away the swarf and repeated the process for the other one. By the feel of it, I think 3.2mm is OK. Possibly I could have gone to 3.1mm, which of course is tapping size for 4BA and 4BA is a similar size to M4, but not quite. In no time at all, the job was completed. All I need to do now is check that both of the grub screws fit in both of the holes, and thankfully they do, but they are a bit long. I reassembled both of the safety valves, and it's time for a top tip. Before nipping up the grub screws to hold the threaded part in place, I need to know the position for the adjuster. So what is the top tip? Well, it's just the pieces of silicone rubber on the end of the compressed air blower. I've used two pieces, a long piece and then a small piece. This allows for a fairly airtight seal and when I want to renew the seal, I only have to remove the end part. This seems to work quite well. Time for a test fit with the groove screw. It fits fine in the hole, but it's a bit too long. I shortened it using my one inch belt sander in the outer part of the workshop, but first I needed to know how long to make it. Using a grub screw like this is not my favourite way to lock a thread in position, but it's pretty much the same as the grub screws which are fitted to the modern Stuart model safety valves. And the principle seems to be okay. It's important that the length of these grub screws is perfect. If they stick out too far, then the tubes won't fit. And in this clip it shows that the tubes fit perfectly and when the tubes are in position I can rotate them to mask the fact that the grub screws are in there. To be honest I can lift the tubes off the safety valves but they are quite tight through the cab roof. Using this method I can just rotate them until I see the grub screws. I also need to fit a pair of grub screws, one here and one here. 
This will prevent any tendency for the turret to rotate. Here I'm holding the turret by the nut part in the vice jaws. Please note that I've used a pair of jaw protectors to stop the vice jaws from marking the nut. Previously I'd used some hydraulic sealant called Bond Lock and this stuff is very tenacious, much more than Loctite 542. Here's a bottle of Bond Lock and it really is very similar to Loctite 542 and it's the same colour. This Bond Lock stuff appears to be a bit more viscous than Loctite 542. Here I'm reassembling the turret once the Bond Lock had been applied. Bond Lock and Loctite adhesives are generally what are called anaerobic adhesives. I'll put the spelling on the screen. Anaerobic means without oxygen. So as soon as these adhesives get starved of oxygen, they set hard and go very rigid. This not only helps to lock the parts in position, any gaps between the threads are filled and therefore the leaks are sealed. Please be aware that these anaerobic adhesives work within different temperature ranges. The ones I use are fine for the applications I use them for. What I'm doing at the moment is drilling holes through the turret to put grub screws in. I drilled the holes all the way through and after I drilled and threaded them I used some bond lock to make sure that the grub screws do not leak. The tapping size drill by the way is 3.2 millimeters because once again I'm going to fit M4 grub screws into the holes. I'm not shortening the grub screws, they're going to go all the way in and this should prevent the turret from rotating and breaking the seal. And if it all works out as planned, I will have a turret with an isolation valve in the middle. I'm using some M4 stainless nuts on the grub screws, just to make sure they stay in position, as well as putting a bit of pressure on the threads, which should help once again with the seal. In the last few days, the weather has definitely improved, so I've started the painting of the cladding. I painted the inside area of all the cladding using etching primer first. The metal needs a coating on both sides to prevent any rusting. After 24 hours, once the etch primer had dried, I decided to paint the inside of the cladding using this paint. It's Auto Paint Northern Matte Black and it's very good quality paint. And here I'm spraying on a generous coating of it. It doesn't really matter if it runs on the inside, although in actual fact it didn't run. But I just want a really good coating of paint on the inside. And its only function is as a rust barrier. I sprayed on a few coats in quite a short time. I kept rotating the part to allow this to happen. And once I was happy with the amount of paint I put on the inside, I moved the entire part into the main workshop to dry. Then I repeated the process on the other half. This of course is the firebox cladding. You can see the cutouts for the two safety valves and the turret. After thoroughly painting the inside of this part, I also moved that into the inner part of the workshop. And now I'm spraying the inner part of the boiler barrel cladding. Although it seems a bit odd to me, the four holes in the cladding had to take two brackets which just support the blower pipe to the smoke box from the cab. After moving the first piece of barrel cladding into the inner part of the workshop, I start work on the second one. And as you can see, I'm applying plenty of paint. This is not going to rust anytime soon. As always, as a special bonus for the weird people out there, here is a shot of the paint drying. This bit was easy because I didn't have to consider any paint runs, and as I mentioned earlier, I didn't get any anyway. This Auto Paint Northern matte black paint really is very good stuff, and I could have used it for the outer layer. But when I paint the outer part, I'll be using HMG Satin Black, and I will be very concerned about not having any runs in the paint. I can't do that yet until these inner parts are dry. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.